Hi, I'm Charlie Kasov. I'm a math teacher. And today we're going to learn how line, bar, and circle graphs are used to represent data. Now a line graph is usually plotted on an x and y axis, the x, the y. And it's really useful for plotting change. For example, if you put time on the x axis and growth on the y, let's say you're monitoring population growth or plant growth or bi a bacteria growth, well, you can plot it and you can see how across time the growth changed up and down. So it's important with this, by the way, to put time on the x and growth on the y if you're going to zigzag because you can't go backwards in time. Now a bar graph is best to use when you're plotting individual performance, for example. So we have a bar graph that still is essentially on an x and y axis, but you're really only worried about the y. So for the y axis, the x axis, you have a bar and let's say this is batting average, and you're plotting baseball statistics. So we have batting average, and you have Ben, and then you also have a bar for John. So it looks like John had a lower batting average than Ben. Bar graphs are good when you are dealing with infinite data. The circle graph, however, is best when you're dealing with finite data. For example, if you have a budget, you can plot it on a circle graph because the circle represents 360 degrees or 100%, and you're divvying things up based on that full 100%. For example, if you have a $200 budget and you're gonna spend $100 on food, then one half of the circle is food. Food, $100. Then maybe movies, that's 50. 25%. And then hotel is 50. So again, 25%. So to go back over, a line graph is best used for plotting change. And a bar graph is best used to track separate performance. And a circle graph is best used to represent uh, a finite amount of data and how it divvies up. So I'm Charlie Kasov, and you just learned how these different graphs are used to represent data. Thanks a lot.